Ride sharing, it's been one of the bigger stories of 2019. In this realm, it seems there is never a dull moment, and now is certainly no exception. Earlier this month, LAX announced that they will be putting an end to curbside pickup for companies like Lyft and Uber. So how exactly is this going over in the rideshare community? It is a question we put now to Cecily Jamila, senior contributor for the website, The Rideshare Guy. It is great to have you with us. And, and we should note, she Ubered in, folks. I so did. welcome, <laughs> welcome here. It seems very fitting that Thank you Thank you, did. thank you. Um, I want to start off talking about LAX, which okay. has been one of the big rideshare stories lately. As almost everybody knows, traffic there is miserable. It is. It's only getting worse. There's a bunch of construction going on mm -hmm. in the run-up to the Olympics. Uh, so the airport basically earlier this month said we got to get a handle on this. Here's yes. what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, starting soon, if you take a ride share there, once you come back to LAX, you can't just wait on the curb. You're going to have to take a shuttle to a special area. Uh, this news broke. How did the ride sharing community feel about this? I think for the most part, everybody is just pretty upset. I think that they think that it's pretty inconvenient across the board. Um, a lot of drivers actually use ride share too, so they understand the benefit of having this access. Yeah. And it just seems like it might be an inconvenience overall. Um, like you said, they said that, you know, due to construction and remodeling and just different things, lane closures, that this will help the congestion. Um, I will say that it's not easy easy picking up passengers at uh, LAX in particular. Why not? It, it, what is that like? Because of the congestion. I yeah. mean, you, you may have an arrival time that says five minutes, but you may not see that person for 20 or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you, you're doing depth-defying things to yeah. get in and out of lanes just to pick people up. So that's a hard thing too. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a little bit of an inconvenience and it changes the scope of how you manage your day pretty much because yeah. drivers don't look at the individual ride. They think about all the rides they have to meet for their individual goals or promotions or things like that. So they're having to make a huge adjustment. Yeah, and it's adjustment that's coming soon. I'd like to note this change is going to go into effect at 3 o'clock in the morning, come October yep. 29th. Uh, Uber, not too happy about this one. Uh, they say that this could lead to super long wait times for passengers. They say LAX hasn't thought this through, that they haven't tested it out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you could see there, that's a little bit about what it's supposed to look like. You hop on a little green uh, LAX shuttle, and then you go to this waiting area, or you can walk, they say. I think they say it's like about 18 minutes walk from the furthest point at LAX. I don't know how much. Right. Baggage they I've factored actually done into this that. Walk have before. you done it? Okay. I have. It's about 18 minutes. Yeah. So what do you see? Okay. So you've done the walk. <laughs> you've seen this plan. It's not a beautiful walk, though. It's no, a trek. No. It is, especially it's, with luggage, children, yeah. and things like that. Like yeah. it's probably not the best thing to do, but it's an option. Um, I like to look, the, look at the bright side of things. So I'm yeah. like, you know, maybe this might be a better for drivers to get in and out of that area because having to deal with the congestion and getting your getting, you know, picking up your rider. Sometimes people cancel on you because they think you're not moving fast enough because they don't understand what's going on. Yeah. So I'm just thinking of ways of like, the, the ways that ride share and gig economy work for me was just being strategic. So I'm mm. just hoping that, you know, people find better ways to kind of move in and out of that area, area as far as the driver's concerned. As far as the rider's concerned, y'all got to get on that shuttle and yeah. figure it out, you know? Unless, and my favorite, when uh, people were tweeting about this, I thought <laughs> this was hilarious. One of the first tweets that someone posted was, here's what you should do. You still call that Lyft or that Uber, and then when they arrive, you just pretend that they're your long-lost cousin, and that was, right? Because it, it wasn't always this way. There was a there was a time where you all you could do was uh, drop-offs as a driver. Yeah. And so we were very savvy in figuring it out. But, I mean, the thing about it is you... The tickets there are very, very hefty. I, I believe mm. at one point, if you like, if you didn't have that uh, permit, you get a thousand dollar ticket. So I don't oh. want the thousand dollar ticket. <laughs> wow. So I'm going to play by the rules. But there's just ways around these rules. I, I just would just hmm. look on Reddit in, a, in about a month or so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, which is where you find all the great illicit stuff. Absolutely. Now I do just want to make it clear: we reached out to LAX about this, and they did provide us with the following statement. Uh, they said that they've done extensive traffic modeling based on the number of actual trips by every mode of transport, including Ubers. They're confident that LAX will have sufficient capacity, and they actually asked Uber to share any detailed data that they might have. They said they haven't gotten it uh, uh, from Uber. So 
We'll see. Yeah. I, I think, like you say, you'll, it remains to be seen uh, what will happen. Uh, so I want to pivot to something that we know has actually happened, okay. and this is updates a couple shows. We did a ride-sharing show. We also did a show about a decision uh, known as the Dynamex decision, and this is a big debate that's been going on for some time now in California over who should be considered an independent contractor, who should be considered an official employee, and there are all sorts of things that relate to that in terms of benefits and whatnot. Not. Bring us up to speed. Uh, you'll see here that uh, Assembly Bill 5, which actually codified this court decision into law, Governor Newsom has signed off on this. Uh, so, mm. you know, I, I would like to say that now we know what things are going to look like, but we certainly don't. And no, everything don't. that I'm hearing and seeing is like, okay, so what does this actually mean? And now the ride sharing companies are investing in a whole lot of money to try to get excluded from this. Cecily, bring right. us up to they speed. They have a ballot initiative. Uh, Uber, DoorDash, and Lyft have all, I guess, put up at least 30 million each yeah. to develop a ballot measure that will exempt them from AB5. I think that's the overall goal. There's other things in that, and they say they're going to speak to drivers' needs and benefits and things like that. We don't know what that looks like just yet. Yeah. Um, people have speculated, so many people speculate about what's going to happen, and no one really knows for sure. Um, I think a lot of folks are kind of. Um, have a doomsday approach, like you won't be able to choose your own, you know, flexible times or this and that. We don't really know what that's going to look like, to be honest with you. So I don't think it's really fair to say this is what it's going to be. Um, I know that there are people who who do ride share and gig economy and they make fabulous money and they don't have any problem with it. There's so many people that are suffering. There's so many people that aren't able to make ends meet. And if you were to ask me personally, I think for that reason, we do need regulation. Cecily, I've been watching uh, some of your videos, and you actually uh, you talked about how ride share <laughs> destroy ride sharing and being this, like you thought it was going to be great, you were going to make all this money when you wanted to, and then it basically destroyed the car that yes, you were driving. Did. And I feel like this is the bigger metaphor for the industry as a whole. Everyone was like, "This is the greatest ride sharing," and now that we're kind of a couple years into mm -hmm. it, we see. It's it's complicated. It's right? very complicated. Where do you see all of this going forward as this whole industry <laughs> kind of matures? I know it's a huge question. We've got about 45 seconds. Oh, sure. <laughs> Honestly, I know that both the rideshare companies are pushing towards autonomous vehicles. For the most part, they don't. They want to X all human beings out of the equation. Yeah. I honestly feel like, you know what, get in while you can. Get in while getting is good. For me, <laughs> that, that ended pretty quickly with yeah. my car. Um, my car transfer mission, you know, basically <laughs> just that situation alone was just not good for me. But who knew that driving your car, your car every day, all day long would speed up the demise of your and depreciation of your car? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. But it makes sense looking back at it. So I feel like in the meantime, while we're still relying on human beings, I suggest that people use other cars or cars that you don't mind ruining or running into the yeah. ground. And there's a whole thing. industry for that now, There too. absolutely you is. Learn as you go. But folks, if you're interested in this world, World. Check Cecily out. She's got good advice. Thank you so much for being here, Cecily. Thank you.